When you hear the word soil, you may imagine a big amorphous blob of brown stuff, but there's so much more to it. For starters, soil is made up of organic matter and discrete mineral particles. Those particles are grouped into three categories based on their size, sand, silt, and clay. A sand particle is about the size of the head of a pin. Silt has a diameter similar to a strand of human hair, and a single grain of clay is about the size of a bacteria. Cool. But so what? Well, the distribution of sand, silt, and clay in a soil, called soil texture, plays a huge role in determining how water, air, and even heat move through the soil, how easily compacted a soil is, how susceptible it is to erosion, how well plant roots can push through it, what nutrients can be stored in the soil, and what contaminants can pass through it to our groundwater. Clay content plays an outsized role in many of these properties because of two key attributes. First, surface area. If you spread out the surfaces of all the grains of sand in a tablespoon, it would roughly cover your kitchen table. But if you did the same with one tablespoon of clay, it could cover a football field. And all that surface area can hold on to water and nutrients and pollutants. Second, clays have charge. Clay minerals are formed in sheets of positive charged cations like silicon and aluminum surrounded by negative charged oxygen and hydroxyls. Through a process called isomorphous substitution, cations of similar size can replace each other in these structures when they form. And if an aluminum with a plus three charge is replaced by a magnesium with a plus two charge, there's an extra negative charge left over that's carried by the clay mineral. This charge gets balanced by cations that are held at the clay surface. And they can be readily exchanged for other cations since they're not part of this clay structure. Generally speaking, the more of this type of isomorphous substitution, the greater the negative charge on the clay and the greater its capacity to exchange cations, which, appropriately, we call cation exchange capacity. A lot of these exchangeable cations are nutrients used by plants like potassium and calcium and ammonium. Cation exchange can also slow the movement of pollutants like chromium or cesium. Multiply all that reactivity by an enormous surface area and it's clear that clays have a huge impact on the environment, on agriculture, and on human health. So, next time you see some soil, erase the thought of a boring brown blob, and think about microscopic sheets of minerals, storing nutrients, and trapping toxins. And then remember that that's just the tip of the iceberg for everything that's going on in soil. And the rest of the iceberg? Not only do we not understand all of the pieces yet, we still don't really know just how big that iceberg is.